Welcome back to the channel, and I had to cover this awesome lot of Star Wars comic books, all CGC graded, that is currently on Heritage Auctions for live online bidding. And it's the number one Star Wars registry in the world. And uh, the final auction, like the live auction, is on Thursday, August 8th. So you can bid up until that time. Uh, about 6 p.m. that night, and then after 6 p.m., it's only live bidding. So I wanted to show you just a few of the books that are going to be in this incredible auction. It barely scratches the surface. There are just some amazing books that you won't find anywhere else. And this collection is owned by someone that I know, and he asked me to show you guys these books, but I would have done it anyway. I've kind of found them on my own. I suspected it belonged this this collection belonged to him and he did confirm that with me and he did ask me to make a video and I said don't worry my viewers needed to see this information anyway because uh, if you've got some money to spend and you're not spending on the the Hakes auction that ends on the 31st Thursday August 8th all of these books will be available for live bidding they're available right now on Heritage for online bidding but you're not going to believe some of these books they are just incredible and again you might want to go to heritageha.com to set up an account if you plan on bidding on these just keep in mind heritage charges a 20 percent buyer's premium and they also do charge sales tax so factor that into your bidding but um, a lot of these books you won't i mean you literally will never find them anywhere and i just wanted to kind of show them to you uh, there's the usual suspects and then there's some that uh, i've never seen in such a high grade before all right, so let's go ahead and very quickly look at a few of these. Again, the, the bidding's already underway, so you can see that uh, bids are currently available. This is just a standard Star Wars number one in a 9.8. We see these a lot, but uh, there are a number of 9.8 examples for Star Wars number one in this auction. Signed examples, reprints, uh, the blank barcode, you know, Whitman's directs. Uh, there are several different variations for Star Wars number one, but uh, this is one I just wanted to kind of start with. Right now, the current bid is at fifteen fifty or eighteen sixty after the buyer's premium, and uh, you're going to see even more of these uh, come up. Uh, here is the thirty-five cent variant for Star Wars number one, and if you don't know what that is, the thirty-five cent variant. There's very few of these that still exist, and this one is a nine point four with white pages. The current bid on this one is $4,100, time left, 24 days. And this one is the number one rated book on Overstreet's list of the top 25 Bronze Age comics. And according to the 2023 Overstreet, for a 9.2, it was $15,000. This one is a 9.4 with white pages, and there's only two graded higher on the census. And again, it's from the highest ranking Star Wars registry set that exists. Uh, to date, CGC has only certified 322 copies of this 35 cent variant. 17 have a grade of 9.4 or higher, two actually higher than a 9.4. So uh, that means that there are 15 copies in a 9.4, which is what this one is. And you compare that to more than 17,000 copies of the regular 30 cent edition, which I just showed you, more than 6,000 of which have graded 9.4 or better. So this is a very, very rare book. I, don't, I have no idea where this one's going to end up, but it is going to be a massive number. It's going to be a brand new high-end Porsche kind of number <laughs> or a down payment for a house kind of number. So uh, if you've got a, a lot of money to burn, this one is at auction and it's one of the highest graded examples out there. Uh, some other foreign variants are all through this auction. And again, you can go check out all of the different ones. I just pulled a, a couple of random ones that were really cool. This is the Spanish edition uh, for Star Wars number four, La Guerra de la Galaxies. I'm sure I'm mingling that, but you can see that it's got all the foreign language. There's French editions. I think I've got a couple of those in this batch that I pulled up, but uh, very, very rare foreign examples are all through this auction. Uh, here is the, let's see, this is the French edition of Star Wars number one in a 9.0 with white pages. And so you can see the, the foreign language there, but very cool to see some of these very tough to find variants. I would imagine, uh, let's see, 
Not listed in the Overstreet, the CGC census as of July of 2024. There are two in a 9.0 with five graded higher. So there's only five copies graded higher than this example and one only one other one that's a 9.0 on the census. Uh, here is the French edition of Star Wars number seven in a 9.6. Uh, this is the highest graded example on the census. And I didn't have any rhyme or reason for some of these. I just kind of wanted to show you some of the cool examples that are out there. Uh, so some of the usual suspects that you would expect to be in this auction is Star Wars number 42 in a new stand edition. The first standard size comic book appearance of Boba Fett and Yoda. And again, this is the new stand in a 9.8 with white pages. They have both the U.S. new stand as well as the Canadian price variant, I believe, for Star Wars number 68 in a 9.8 with white pages. So uh, this is another book that's always considered pretty desirable from the original Marvel run with a, it's kind of like a, a Boba Fett flashback story with Fennec, is it not Fennec Sean, what's it? Fen Shiza, the bounty hunter, the Mandalorian bounty hunter. And this is also the first mention or first appearance of the planet Mandalore and Mandalorians in comics. So I think there's also a Canadian example, Canadian price variant, as well as the U.S. newsstand edition. Uh, a number of different weeklies are, are also in this auction. Uh, I just picked up a few that I thought were really cool looking. This is Empire Strikes Back weekly number 127 from 1980. This is an 8.0 with white pages, and this is just a great cover that shows Luke on Dagobah with his X-Wing in the swamp. And then there's also a side profile of Vader trying to capture the Millennium Falcon. And uh, again, this, you know, I have no idea what, uh, let's see, there's two in an 8.0 with only five higher. And again, th there's a number of different weeklies throughout this auction. So I just pulled up a couple that I particularly liked. <coughs> um, here's weekly number 129 with a great Boba Fett cover. And that one's in a 9.0 with white pages. There's three in a 9.0 with only six graded higher than this one. These are the larger kind of magazine style books that uh, came out in the 1980s. Here is Marvel Super Special number 16, which I believe this is the first appearance of Boba Fett in comics. Don't quote me on that. It might be the one before that. Uh, but Marvel... Uh, Marvel Super Special number 16, I, I believe it is that, you know, it's in magazine style. Star Wars 42 from the original Marvel run is this first standard size comic book appearance. This is a 9.8 with white pages. And that one, uh, the last one I remember seeing selling that was a 9.8 for this book was in the $2,600 to $2,800 range, somewhere in that ballpark. And to me, I, I feel like now is a really good time if you're into these kind of super hard to find variants now's a really good time to probably pick some of them up because it seems like the Star Wars comic book market or magazine market, graded magazine market like this, these weeklies and the super specials, that market is really quiet right now. And uh, I, I just feel like if you're into those kind of modern variants, anything else that's in this auction, there's going to be some really good deals, I think, that come out of it. Uh, there are none higher and there are 25 copies in a 9.8 for Super Special number 16 for that one. Uh, here is Marvel Movie Showcase, which is, uh, this collects mo the movie adaptation comics number one and number two, Star Wars number one and number two in kind of a uh, combined book. So this is one that's, you know, you can find this one fairly regularly. This one shouldn't be that expensive. Uh, the Overstreet value was, you know, 95 bucks for a 9.2. I, I, I want to say this will probably go in the six to $800 range, somewhere in that ballpark for a 9.8. Uh, Marvel, or excuse me, Star Wars Annual number three. This is one I just picked up in a Comic Link auction. This is in a 9.8 with white pages. Very tough to find that one in a 9.8. Uh, the bid on this one is $310 right now. And there are 40 of these in a 9.8 grade. So I just bought this one. And just a great cover. And again, I, I, I looked for one of these for a very long time before I found one on Comic Link. And it, it, that just shows you how the market works, right? You can, you can wait for years to find one, or months at least, uh, which for me it was over. It was almost two years that I tried to find one of these in a 9.8. And they either appeared in a buy it now and were swooped up immediately before I even saw it, or uh, I just missed it in my searches. But 
Uh, I get one a month ago, and then sure enough, a month later, another one pops up at auction. So that's just a great cover that I wanted to point out. Uh, here is a cool one. This is the Spanish edition of Heir to the Empire number one in a 9.6 with white pages. So uh, again, a lot of foreign variants throughout this auction. There's, this is the only one in a 9.6, and there's only one 9.8 for this book, Heir to the Empire number one, which is the first appearance of Mar Jade as well as Grand Admiral Thrawn in comics, but this is the harder to find Spanish edition. And in general, foreign comics don't tend to go for as much money as the US version for whatever reason. Maybe that'll change over time, but in general, like French editions and Spanish editions, things like that, they just very rarely go for as much money as the US editions. Maybe that'll change for some of those higher graded ones. Uh, this is Defenders of the Lost Temple in a 9.8 with white pages. This is actually the first appearance of Bo-Katan. And this is like a trade paperback, I believe, is what I would consider this. This is not really a comic. Uh, it's also the first appearance of the Darksaber in kind of any kind of publication. Yeah, here we go. First comic book appearances of Bo-Katan, pre Vizsla, and the Darksaber. And this is the German edition. Uh, this is the only one in a 9.8 grade. So <laughs> it's just pretty wild to see this collection come up for sale. Uh, here's another Clone Wars number one. This is just the standard U.S. edition, but this is signed by uh, Ashley Eckstein, who obviously voiced um, Ash uh, Ahsoka Tano in the Clone Wars series. And it was also signed uh, by Matt Lanter, who I believe voiced Anakin in the Clone Wars cartoon. So that one is double signed in a 9.8 in the Signature series. If you're looking for that one, that's the first, obviously, first appearance of, of Ahsoka Tano in, and Cap Captain Rex in comics. The harder to find special edition of Clone Wars number one is also in this auction. There's only 1,000 copies printed in total uh, of this book, so that's a, a pretty desirable one. Next up is the tough to find Matina variant cover for Thrawn number one. And, you know, again, this is a, a modern book, but it's a very tough to find variant cover for Thrawn's origin story. And, you know, for a while there, this was like a three or $4,000 book. I would, I would wager that this is probably gonna sell in that $1,500 or below range. There was one on eBay that sold a few months back in that $1,300 range, if memory served. Now, there's only 44 copies of this one in a 9.8, but that's a beautiful book there. Uh, another very weird one, this is the first time I've ever seen this before. This is Galaxy's Edge. This is like a uh, souvenir book in a 9.8 with white pages. And there are only two of these in a 9.8 grade. This was an opening day souvenir book for guests of the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge theme park, originally distributed with the Millennium Falcon themed die cut embossed triple gatefold wrapper, which is also included as part of this sale. So no bids yet on this one. Again, this is such a, a unique item that I have no idea what this is worth, but I'm sure that somebody would want that just given that there's only two copies in a 9.8 on the census. And again, just another random one I wanted to show you is a webcomic collection season one for Tales from the Clone Wars, number one, a great Anakin Skywalker and Yoda cover. No bids on that one as well. Uh, there are nine in a, in a 9.8 grade on the census. So again, all of these came from the same collection to my knowledge. And uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. And I, I don't think he'll mind me sharing this information, but he said that he had 4,400 slabs, all of them Star Wars books that are going to be sold on Heritage in the coming months. But he's starting with some of the rarest of the rare. Uh, and this, again, you can go check out this auction. There's several hundred at auction in this lot. Again, the, the online bidding is available now. You just have to have an account and have it registered with Heritage. And then the, the bids cut off at 6 p.m. Uh, Central Time. Seven, or, I'm sorry, it says, yes, yeah, 6 p.m. Central Time, usually, for me anyway, is when the bids stop on August 8th. And then from there, it has to be live bidding only. You have to be either on your phone on the Heritage app, phone app, or on your, on your desktop and have live bidding enabled. But uh, wow, what an incredible lot. And for you Star Wars comic book collectors that are looking for some real rarities, this is the auction for you. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll be back soon.